Justin Trudeau is just a weak little man who is way out of his depth. Liberals are supposed to be all about democracy, but here we have thousands of people exercising their democratic rights of protest. And what's his response? To behave like a dictator. Why? Because again, he's actually just a weak little man whose mask has finally slipped. He isn't woke. He isn't liberal. He isn't fair and just. No. In my opinion, he's just a good-looking chancer who pretended to have liberal values in order to obtain power. Look at what's happening right now. Trudeau has declared a public emergency because thousands of people, thousands of people, are protesting his bizarre and draconian rules. The Emergencies Act allows him to freeze bank accounts, suspend insurance, tow away trucks. Well, that's strange, isn't it? Because surely if this was just a small group of fringe protesters, as he called them, then there would be no need to behave like this, would there? It's important to present a little bit of context, actually, when it comes to the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act was passed in 1988. It gives the government added powers in times of, get this, national crisis. So the situation must meet a very high bar, specifically an urgent and critical situation that, quote, seriously endangers the lives, health or safety of Canadians. And Cabinet can only invoke legislation if the emergency cannot be addressed by any existing federal law and if it exceeds the province's powers to handle it effectively. So, Trudeau sees this current situation, does he, as an urgent and critical one? Really? He thinks it's endangering the lives of Canadians. A bit more context, I think, ladies and gentlemen. Lawful protests don't qualify as a justification to invoke this act. It can only happen under the following specific scenarios. Espionage or sabotage, foreign influenced activities, threats or use of acts of serious violence for political, religious or ideological objectives, covert unlawful acts intended to undermine or overthrow the constitutionally established government. So, what's his justification then? There doesn't appear to be any, does there? But this explains exactly why Trudeau is trying to claim that the protesters are a bunch of dangerous far-right nutters endangering Canada's public health, despite the fact, of course, that Omicron has been proven to be somewhat of a vaccine, in a way, a milder but more contagious variant. The only way he can legally prevent people from exercising their democratic right to protest is if he demonises them and makes them out to be a lot worse than they actually are. In other words, he has to invent a national security threat, which, I suspect, is why he decided to flee the capital with his family when these protests first started. Justin Trudeau has said he has, quote, no plans to call in the military. Oh, cheers, Justin, mate. That's nice of him, isn't it? What a lovely, kind-hearted, benevolent chap he is. What would he ask the military to do? Hi there, General. Good to meet you. There's a bloke over there sitting in his truck watching his son play ice hockey in the street with a few other people who disagree with my ridiculous laws. Can you open fire on them, please? Come off it. The fact is, we're witnessing a massive toddler tantrum. Justin Trudeau has had everything his own way for his entire life. He was born into immense privilege. He's the son of a former Canadian PM, Pierre Trudeau. He's got away with wearing blackface, amongst other things, by the way. He's the classic plastic politician. And he simply can't handle it when the weight of public opinion is against him. Yesterday, right here, we interviewed a Canadian journalist who's been banned from Twitter for reporting on the protests. Trudeau's response to opposition is to try to ruin them financially demonise people and cancel them. Old school mafia bosses used to just put a bullet in the back of their head, didn't they? But he's more sophisticated than that, it would appear. If Canada seems like a far away country, as if it seems like what's happening over there is irrelevant, then you're wrong, because it could happen here. Here we have a weak little man who's ridden to fame, power and fortune because he's claimed to be a progressive liberal, but he's ended up behaving like a tin pot dictator. Let this be a lesson to us all. Don't believe the rhetoric. Don't take your politicians at face value, because in reality, they're usually the very opposite of what they claim to be.